Welcome to Empowerment Radio. As she so nicely said, I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. And uh, yeah, I heard that in Seattle, the summer just arrived, which uh, I think it's wonderful news. So welcome summer and welcome summer in Seattle. It's going to be unfortunately soon over again. Well, we are talking about something that my good friend uh, has pushed me to talk about for a while now. And I think it's a really, really important topic. And I see this very often with my clients. So I'm really excited to share my view and some tips and tools on that. What I think from the latest study I read, one in five people, one in five employees are suffering from. What? I will tell you in a moment. Let me tell you first about my alter ego. Now, my alter ego is the other part of my personality. It's called Farmer Fred. Yes, Farmer Fred. And Farmer Fred is a guy who loves riding tractors. He loves to be out in fields. He loves to deal with uh, his you know, land and play with his horses. And this Farmer Fred has uh, recently found out that a tractor is unlike what he thought it was, what I thought it was, a tractor is breakable. I had no idea. I was having this tractor, was a used one. I thought it would work perfectly well for mowing the fields. And I found out after one time of mowing and unfortunately pushing it too hard and turning into small circles, it broke down and it cannot be repaired. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this because I realized as Farmer Fred that I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening to what my tractor was telling me along the way. Don't turn too closely and don't push too hard and don't overheat the engine. All of those things I wasn't paying attention to and poof, kaput. Now, how often do we do this actually with ourselves? How often are we not listening to our energy and to our mind and our body and simply are driving ourselves as hard as when we were in our 20s and simply expecting that we are like a good old diesel engine able to run forever and then at some point we are realizing something is not working anymore something is breaking down and this is the topic of today's show that burnout that more and more people are suffering from. There are millions of people that have been not being able to go to work because of burnout. So many that actually the World Health Organization recently declared this as a condition, a workplace phenomenon, whatever that means. But it means it's recognized as a real thing, even though we still don't really know what it is. The medical world is still a little bit, you know, in a scratching their heads place because there is no real test to define between burnout and anxiety and depression and chronic stress. And it may be just one overlap. But what I find with burnout is that we have to focus on the symptoms as something that may give us good understanding of what actually was driving the burnout and what was driving the symptoms in the first place. Burnout is not something we cannot avoid and it's not something we cannot also overcome. Burnout is something we just have to be more and more aware of. There is a reason why so many people feel burned out because maybe we are pushed to heart by the workplace, by the expectations of those around us, society, the media, family, and we are pushing ourselves way too hard. Now, burnout was actually something that was found in the 70s by a uh, psychologist who was observing that especially healthcare professionals were at some point breaking down. They had no energy, no motivation, felt exhausted mentally and physically, and just went into a place of, yeah, almost cynical hopelessness. Now, this is something that I believe then eventually got uh, into not only healthcare professional jobs, but 
any kind of job where the demands became just higher and our ability to recharge or our ability to just find some kind of balance in life became more and more difficult. But even if you are not a professional, let's say you're staying at home, you're a homemaker, taking care of kids, same thing. You can easily run into burnout. I found a really sweet little note uh, from someone who wrote, um, it took four punches of the snooze button to get me out of bed this morning. I wasn't tired or sick for that matter, but I was sick and tired, sick and tired of the same old routine, minute after minute, day after day, year after year, since 15 years when I made the decision to stay at home to manage our family. Now, how many of you can relate to that? How many of you do feel that this routine of life is getting just too much? You're feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling that somehow getting up on the horse gets more and more difficult. Now, when you have a full-blown burnout, you do have this feeling of no energy, wanting to stay in bed, isolating yourself more and more, feeling more and more that life is just a waste of time. And, and that can easily look like depression. Now, the difference there between depression and burnout can also be that when you're having a burnout and you're taking some time off and you're recharging yourself, it can actually make you feel much better. But when you have depression and you're taking time off, you may actually feel worse because you feel less useful and less engaged in life. So there are these subtle differences. But again, there are also overlaps we have to pay attention to. But if you have burnout or if you're heading towards burnout, it's time for a course correction because your body and your mind tell you, hey, stop, this is no longer working. I'm overheating. I'm overgiving. I'm no longer having the energy to keep up with life. Now, some of you may just wonder, well, sounds very interesting, but I don't know if I'm heading towards burnout. I have no idea what that means. I get still out of bed. I'm still okay. I can still accomplish everything I have on my to-do list. Well, let's have a look. There are a few things that you may actually also discover as warning signs that your mind or your body are telling you, huh? you are getting in that direction of emptying your batteries and burning out eventually like this little light bulb I hold in my hands. Now, have you become more cynical or critical, either at work or also at home? Do you drag yourself through the day and have trouble getting started? Have you become more and more irritable and impatient with your coworkers, your customers, or your family, or your friends? Do you lack the energy to be consistent in your efforts? You may have a little spurt, but then somehow it's petering off. Do you have a hard time to concentrate and focus on a task? And then do you lack satisfaction at the end of the day from your achievements, from the checked off to-do lists? Do you feel disillusioned about your job, your life, and wonder what's the purpose anyhow? And then are you using food, drugs, alcohol, just to make yourself feel better or simply numb yourself out? Have you have the feeling that when you had a weekend or you're going early to bed, and sleep, that you still feel not very rested, that you still feel somehow you're lacking energy to again go into another week, another day? And do you have unexplained headaches or joint and, and muscle pains or problems with your digestion or any other physical symptoms that prevent you from just sometimes going about your day-to-day -day task. Can be colds, the summer cold that never goes away, that's always hanging around. Now, all of those things can be signs of burnout, that you're going towards it. And they are all warning signs for you to 
pay attention because burnout has not only the consequence of not you know having the energy to do the work that you're supposed to do or follow through with your obligations burnout can also lead to worse it can lead to insomnia chronic fatigue chronic stress it can lead to heart disease it can lead to high blood pressure it can lead to alcohol abuse it can lead to a whole range of things and eventually it certainly can lead also to a sense of anxiety and depression. Now, today what I want to talk about is how we can prevent burnout from happening, but not only just, you know, nice little tools like, well, I'll take some time off or use mindfulness meditation, which is all great. But what actually drives burnout in the first place? Why do we do what we are doing? If we are driving towards burnout, who is the driver? Who is at the steering wheel? And how come? that we are making routines, our slave drivers, and our jobs, our prisons. What is it behind it? And what do we need to do on a more fundamental level to change that and to eventually not only prevent or overcome burnout, but maybe learn from it and make our lives more rich and fulfilling? So stay tuned, and we will be right back. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. Are you burning out? Do you feel like that you have been driving yourself too hard or that you may have been just uh, feeling that life is too overwhelming? Have you been dealing with chronic stress and just at some point realize, well, I have limits too? Now, the other day I talked to a, a client of mine who has been really seeing himself in some ways like Superman. He was just always on top of everything. He could foresee any problems that his business had way ahead. He was incredibly great in getting new customers and, and everything worked well. And they, he and his wife had a business together. And so it was also very enjoyable. It was just his life. Well, then a few years later, after all the successes and all that wonderful accomplishment, he developed a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. Now, what happened was then that he realized, okay, every time I think about business, somehow inside of me, I feel like overwhelmed and stressed out. So eventually I had to step away from the business and just take a break. Now, when he took a break, he also realized how much this business had really cost him, how much energy he had given to it, but he wasn't necessarily willing to consider any other options, just like selling the business and maybe just rebooting or restarting life. Now, when I talked to him and his wife, and we talked about that idea of, well, what if you actually just give yourself a break? You had all the success in the world. You are financially well off. It's time for you to maybe recharge. He almost panicked because he was afraid that there is really nothing else for him to do. And there was some sense of emptiness and a void. And then his wife said, you know, I really miss my husband. I really know that you are an extremely great business person, but I don't know where my husband is. And I think that's something that when you are in that mode of burning yourself on such a high volume or temperature that you don't see anything anymore what sometimes can also happen is that the people that you care most about and maybe the people that you do this all for don't really find you anymore they somehow wonder where the person they married the husband the mother the father where is that person it's gone and so that is something that also is part of the reason why we have to understand that burnout is not only a, a personal issue, it's also something that affects all the people around us. And it goes deep into our relationships, but of course also into the relationship with ourself. Now, before I go more into risk factors and ways for us to prevent this and overcome this phenomenon, here's a phone number to call in. 
800-930-2819. Call in and ask a question. Share about your insights and what you experienced in regards to burnout or wondering maybe whether you go towards burnout and what's underneath it. Let yourself get a little support. 800-930-2819. And of course, you can go to the also chat box on Transformation Talk Radio and ask your question there. Now, here's a scenario. Risk factors that, that make you more prone to have burnout. One of them is feeling that you don't have control. Feeling somehow trapped. You don't really have an influence of your decisions. You cannot really change anything. You don't really feel like that whatever you want to do differently will make uh, a difference or will be uh, accepted by others. So you feel powerless. You feel there is a lack of control. And that's one thing where you literally feel blocked. You know, a burnout, you can see this like a car that somehow wants to push forward, but there is a block. There is a, the brakes that are pulled in the engine, like my tractor, is overheating. Another one is when you are really working, but you don't really know for what, whether it's at home with your family or in a job, when you have unclear ideas of what are actually the definitions of success? What are the expectations people have on me? How do I really feel that at the end of the day, it was worth it, I did a good job? So that's when you're kind of spinning your wheels, when you just go through the routines and in the end really not knowing what for. Because we all, whether it's financial or whether it's emotional, we all need some kind of a payback, a payoff for that, what we are doing. It's always an energy exchange. And if we are not getting anything back, well, maybe you get a paycheck, but you don't really get any good feeling back. Then again, this goes easily in the confusion and this, this uh, mental state of spinning and spinning eventually out of control. Then, of course, when you are in a situation at home or at work where you feel there's tension, there is a dysfunctional situation, there is often conflict, there is passive aggressiveness, there is constant dissatisfaction, there is a bully, whatever those things are, they are extremely stressful and they can make it just easier for you to just want to check out and we have to see burnout also as a way for your mind to get you out of a situation that just feels too much or unbearable. Another, um, another risk factor is when you feel that you don't have support, when you feel like it's all on you. You don't have a sense that anyone really cares, anyone is there for you. You just have to take the brunt of everything that can also easily lead to burnout. Now, these are just a few, and you probably can find other factors that have been contributing to your burnout. But what's important is, again, what is driving this? What's driving this sense of just overgiving and not asking for more? What's driving this sense of powerlessness and feeling that you cannot really change anything? What's driving this sense of, not having boundaries or speaking up for yourself and just letting things happen, letting dysfunctional relationships continue to go on. Well, what's underneath there is how we relate to ourselves, how we are seeing ourselves in the world and, and how we are speaking to ourselves, what beliefs we are holding inside. Believe it or not, one of the most common beliefs that so many people have just, you know, ingrained somewhere inside, whether it's coming from the childhood, from relationships, from the teachers, from the friends, from the parents, who knows? But so many people believe that they are fundamentally not good enough. Isn't that true? I mean, do you really feel like, oh, I am great, I am wonderful? Or are you just telling yourself this, but deep inside you know the way you're thinking or acting or feeling just says the opposite. I'm not good enough. And when you don't feel good enough, of course, you're much more likely to do more, to overgive, or you're much more likely willing to just shut up and put up 
And you're much more likely to say, well, my needs don't really matter. What other people want is more important. So really understanding that one of the fundamental things that need to change is for you to see your own worthiness so that you can actually put yourself first, that you can see, well, you know what? This job is not as important as my health or my family having every night dinner is not as important as me being actually happy and pleasant to be around. Now, the other thing is that there are sometimes false identities. You know, like uh, there are people that believe, well, I have to be hardworking. That's who I need to be. I need to be successful. I need to be the breadwinner, the provider. I need to be that person who is always putting all the weight of the family on the shoulders. And, and these identities that may have worked when we had all the youth and vigor and energy of the past, at some point they become too much. And at some point they are isolating us because we are feeling like, well, you know, I just have to play that role. Just like a client of mine said, you know, I'm just going to continue to be that person from my family who is just every day giving and overgiving because if I should die with 55 and a heart attack, wouldn't that be an honorable, honorable way to leave this world behind? No, it wouldn't. Because in the end, if you die when you're 55 and you leave your family behind and they have to somehow deal without you, you have been actually rather selfish. And that is what we need to realize, that sometimes these you know, roles or tasks we put on us because we want to be the heroes or we want to be the ones that are really taking care of everyone because that's what's expected from us, that this becomes also then not only self-negating, it becomes also selfish because we are, when we are burned out, no longer available to those that need us. And they don't need us always to be the superheroes. They may need us actually more as playmates or just a part of the family to have fun with and to relax and to enjoy life because just taking care of business isn't necessarily what life is all about. Now, another root cause that I find is often hard to let go of is that feeling of competition. You know, there is such a competition mindset that we are often having, which is linked with the cousin of competition, which is comparison. So when you're competing and comparing yourself to others and you always feel like, well, I need to have more, I should be further ahead, my 401k should be as big as that of my brother, my house has only 10 rooms, it should have 15. Whatever we are dealing with with this competition and comparison thing, we are also getting easily in the mindset of I'm not good enough, I'm not yet where I'm supposed to be, I'm not fitting in, I'm not measuring up. And those thoughts and those beliefs can also easily drive burnout. And we are not always aware of it. We are just accepting it. We are feeling like, well, this is who we are. This is how we're supposed to be. And we're not giving ourselves permission for a course correction. And Maybe telling ourselves, wait a second, no, this burnout thing that's happening here, that's actually a clear sign that something in my identity, something in my approach to life is not sustainable, it's not working, and it certainly doesn't make me happy. And the last thing that I find and that ties back into this overgiving, which really often happens also in, in women and uh, women that are juggling being a, a wife, a mother, and a professional career person, which is really in itself just uh, way too much. But that idea of this is my role to play, to be the always available, loving, caring mother or spouse, and then I have to also really get ahead in my career. And, and that idea of I only fit in, I only can really belong when I am not having any demands on myself in regards to what I need, when I'm not really complaining, when I'm always just giving, that is also a very old structure, an old mindset that unfortunately can also run us into the ground. So all of those beliefs, I would like you just to have an eye on. Ask yourself, 
What am I thinking that makes me drive myself so hard? What is the resistance that just says, hey, you can just read a book. You don't have to uh, always be productive. You don't have to watch a show on TV and iron at the same time. You don't have to, even on Saturday, still wonder, okay, do I need to change the light bulb, mow the lawn, or, or do anything else in order to prove my worthiness? Notice your inner resistances to you putting yourself first, to you giving back to yourself. And those resistances, those thoughts can tell you a lot about the beliefs, the beliefs of not being good enough, of not belonging, of not being worthy, that can drive you towards burnout. Cool. So we'll talk more about burnout and how to prevent it right after the break. <music> 